Hey guys, Troy here at Solar Dot Tools, and I'm excited in this video. I'm going to be sharing with you how to get Amazon reviews by utilizing ManyChat. Now, I'm going to answer really the biggest question we get as to how to get Amazon customers into your ManyChat flows. And I'm going to give you some practical steps, things that you can do right away. But I also think it'll give you some other ideas, different executions that you can also deploy in your business. So with that, let me jump right into what I've got ready for you guys. So again, we're focusing on how to get Amazon reviews with ManyChat. And we're going to start with what I think is probably the most underutilized resource in ManyChat itself, and that is the Messenger Ref URL. In its simplest form, what this is is effectively a link that you can share that once clicked kicks off a mini chat flow. That is really the simplest way to explain it. And where you can find it in your mini chat account, I'm here uh, in my account under Growth Tools, Widgets. Then you can uh, set up and manage your Messenger ref URLs. Now I've already created a sample one, uh, aptly named uh, Sample Ref URL here. And what you do is you build out your mini chat flow and then simply integrate that as your opt-in message. So ref URL message is actually the name of the flow that I have integrated for this particular ref URL. And you can confirm once you do the same steps through the uh, preview here as well. And of course I can edit, I can replace that opt-in message. But what happens when I click, let me click over to set up here. When I share this ref URL, anytime somebody clicks, they're taken in to this opt-in message, which is this specific mini chat flow. So really very simple, very elegant solution to where if you share this via email, if you shared it via social media, any form digitally that you share this link, you can have a customer or potential customer kick off this flow, the flow again that you integrate as part of your opt-in message. So very simple, very simple solution there. And I'm gonna show you some executions that I think will get the kind of the creative juices flowing, how best to really use the Messenger ref URL. One thing to focus on is always really driving point the home that you're offering value. You should aim to offer value either before or alongside sharing and using the ref URL. You wanna make sure it's not very cold and transactional uh, that you're just throwing a link out to a customer or potential customer, but you really wanna focus on over delivering and offering that value. Now, the way I'm gonna recommend that you do that is taking the time to either read your existing reviews, if you don't have very many, uh, looking at your closest competitors, both their good and bad reviews, to really understand and inform the content that you're gonna share that does deliver on that value. So the way that this can take form is by drafting a, a piece of content, be it a PDF, be it an ebook, that you are going to share with your customer as part of their buying experience. Now, don't be intimidated by this step because very quickly and easily, it took me about 10 minutes on Fiverr to find uh, article creators, uh, folks that are putting together the lead magnets, so that's a little bit more persuasive copy for these informational resources, or even creating an ebook. An ebook is probably a little bit more intimidating than it needs to be because really a short PDF, a three to five page PDF, is sufficient to provide insightful content that's gonna help us mitigate negative reviews but offering value in the hopes of capturing those positive, uh, positive buying experiences and positive reviews. So very simple and easy step. Once we get those insights from really taking the time to read the reviews, look at the competitive landscape, analyze our existing reviews, and inform the type of content that we're going to draft. Now, if you want some ideas for this, think of uh, common mistakes, things that people are doing maybe wrong with their product, the product, uh, your product in this case, whether it's a sequence of steps they need to take, is there key ingredients that need to be isolated and they need to be informed as to maybe the smell of a specific ingredient or the use? Is it fat soluble, water soluble? You can really kind of dive into what your product entails, how that customer is gonna interact with it and how you can inform them while adding value. Because ultimately, this little piece of content is gonna be valuable to them. And these are some really cool examples I found where uh, getting in front of common mistakes 
where if somebody is taking, let's say, a, a keto product and is not aware of the implications of starting a keto diet or the keto flu, or maybe they're uh, buying an argan oil product from you. Well, they know that there's two dozen, three dozen different uses of it, but maybe they bought it because they were referred to use the product, but they have no idea how to put it to use. You can imagine, you can take somebody from a one-star buying experience where they've spent the time and money to buy a product, but they don't know how to use it. You can bridge that gap through this little bit of content. Again, it only needs to be like three to five pages, but isolating and identifying those areas of highest value uh, for your customer. Now, what we do once we draft uh, that piece of content, put together our three to five page PDF, we're gonna wanna create a subdomain. Now, if you're not familiar with this, it takes about five, 10 minutes again, where go to your hosting provider or search this quick Google search of how to set up subdomain through your hosting provider. So if it's GoDaddy, uh, if it's Bluehost, if it's Namecheap, but the way that I would recommend that you do this and that the beauty of setting up a subdomain is it serves as a really great vanity URL. If you notice, I've bolded some of the examples here because if we share a gift, if that's how we're phrasing what we're sharing, if we're sharing information, so info.domain.com, another great way to really have that stand out because you can also share a sub page but you notice here, it kind of buries the lead. If you're sharing a gift, if you're sharing information, uh, subpage functions the same way for our purposes, but it's not quite um, as pretty or as sticky as a subdomain. So I'm gonna recommend that you go this route. These domains and uh, this syntax is totally fine. So of course, in the case of, um, we're gonna replace domain in this case to our domain. So if it's info.google.com, info.facebook.com, or info.mybrandedwebsite.com, simply set up this subdomain and we're gonna use that for next steps. Because where this is going to end up is the use of that subdomain or that subpage, whatever you're comfortable with and can set up, is going to be easily displayed on our product inserts. Because what this allows us to do is 100% of the customers buying and interacting with our product will have a chance to look at our product inserts and it leaves the door open for us to capture reviews. Now, I gave a really short and sweet example. This is just kind of a sample product insert, but I'm gonna encourage you to maybe be more compelling with your copy, highlighting what information you're isolating in your content and in your resource, but this is the form that it can take. Simply, um, how to avoid common mistakes with product X, how to get the best, uh, best results or benefit Y with product X, and then utilizing that subdomain or that subpage in your product insert. Very clean, very simple, but a one-liner, and that, that, that link that is gonna be in and of itself fairly sticky. Now, why would I want to use a subdomain or a subpage? Because if I, again, if I hop back into my um, mini chat account, if we took a, that, a look at that ref URL, let's say I wanted somebody to end up at this URL when they took a look at my product insert. If I were to take this and add it to my product insert, do you think they're really gonna spend the time to add in every little symbol, number, and letter? I don't think so, I don't think so. So we're gonna work around that by pushing our subdomain or our subpage to our ref URL. And just as easy to configure that through your hosting provider. And as much time as it takes to set up your subdomain or subpage, you just simply redirect it to where it pushes. Anytime somebody accesses that link, they will go to our ref URL. So it serves that purpose, that explicit benefit of being a nice vanity URL that's very sticky, and by that I mean very memorable, to where if they're looking at it and then they end up on their browser, they can input it and then get right into our opt-in message through our mini chat flow. Very simple, very elegant solution to where we can use something memorable, very short and sweet, and then get them right into our mini chat flow. So again, always remember and be cognizant of are you providing value? Take the time to read those reviews to get the insights as to how to better inform your customers how to use your product. What are things that they can make sure to avoid or make sure that they do to get the best benefit? 
And if you do that, then you're really ready to focus on how to start and kick off the flow itself. So very simple use of both the subdomain and ref URL. And at a high level, that's really the biggest, some of the biggest pieces is that we've created content based on the insight that we've gathered. We've set up a subdomain or sub page and we're pushing that subdomain or sub page to our ref URL, which kicks off our mini chat flow. So for me and my purposes, the mini chat flow again that I've integrated, again, ref URL message, which syncs up with what we have here as our opt-in message on the uh, messenger ref URL side is that once somebody opts in, so again, this message will sync up with the starting step here in this flow. We simply uh, call out or bring attention to why they ended up in this flow. They wanted that value, they wanted that resource. So of course, we're gonna make it very easy for them to confirm that that's what they're looking for. And if they click yes, we deliver the PDF that we have drafted, of course, building excitement, being really excited about being able to share that information with them. And I had little extras here where, you know, I especially like the part in the PDF about, you know, point X or point Y, kind of personalizing it to where you can, again, over deliver in that experience. Now, where this mini chat logo is, this is where you're going to actually upload your PDF, your ebook, ebook, whatever that powerful and insightful piece of content is, you want to get that to them as soon as they confirm that that's what they're looking for. And once they have a chance to take a look, we add in a short delay um, to where, again, we're assuming they're taking time to really review the content, understand it, review that against the use of the product, but making the most use of what you've put together for them. Because after uh, there has been a, a little bit of time there, that's when we're ready to request review, uh, request a review or a rating, feedback as to their uh, buying experience. Because again, they've bought the product, they've interacted with your product, they've reviewed their insert, kicked off your uh, this mini chat flow in this case, and now we're ready to, uh, to ask them to consider to rate their buying experience. Now, this flow is relatively built out, but what I wanna share with you is really kind of a more basic alternative option, because this can be very very much simplified. Everything we've gone on, uh, gone over thus far is pretty, uh, pretty lean, very straightforward in terms of some of the resources we're using. So if we wanted to, we would take this message here as an alternative option and add that following our slight delay after we have delivered our information resource. So I could bolt that on here to, uh, to this specific smart delay. So after they have been sent their PDF, that piece of content, there is a delay, again, depending on what time frame uh, you feel would apply best to your product, to that piece of content, and then having an ask for them leaving a review. And that's a pretty straightforward, simple, really three-step process. We would confirm that that's what they're looking for. Are they ready to receive um, the content? We deliver the content, and then we ask for a review. That's a really simple and straightforward way to build out this flow. The longer form way, and this is how we, uh, we use at Seller Tools for some of our done for you automations, is to be able to really nail down exactly what they're looking for, how they're rating their overall buying experience, and making sure that we're delivering support on the fly in real time uh, based on the rating of their overall experience. So again, you can kind of take a look at this at a high level. Won't necessarily dive too far into this, uh, because we have some additional resources uh, that you can find if you want to get into this uh, level of granularity and kind of see what some of these steps are. But essentially, we bolt on very specific things where uh, if we've knocked it out of the park, we facilitate the ability to leave a review. If there's opportunities to elevate the buying experience, we, uh, we request additional information. And if it's a really crummy buying experience, of course, we want our team to be notified right away. So if it's, if it's a uh, three-star list, we want to make sure our team is notified, that we can get ahead of it, and that we can, uh, we can make sure our team follows up for quick resolution. Again, this is where negative review mitigation uh, is as much as a part of the equation as it is the ability to capture uh, more positive reviews. So definitely take the time if you want to review this uh, this more complex flow. I'm just highlighting things kind of here at a high level so you can see what it looks like and where you could potentially evolve to. If you're just starting out, keep things very simple where you're focusing on uh, opting in 
because again, this is person is being added to your list, so you can re-engage re -engage them at a later date. You're offering and adding that value, and then you have the uh, review request shortly after they have received that value, and um, hopefully you've created just a really over-the-top uh, buying experience on, on really on every uh, front. So just to quickly recap, what we have touched on is really leveraging um, the use of ref URLs, uh, what again I think is a very underutilized resource, how we can integrate that with the use of a product insert using a vanity URL in the form of either a subdomain or a subpage, how we integrate that, um, integrate the use of that uh, and add it to our product insert and ensure that that link points to our ref URL for an existing mini chat flow. And that flow, again, we can use it for a number of other objectives. Again, what we're focusing on is review capture because we have a 100% chance if somebody's opening our product and that product insert is there, we have a 100% chance that's our starting place from which we can capture reviews. So hopefully this was really helpful for you guys, giving you some different ideas of how you can use a ref URL, be creative with your product inserts. I'd love any questions that you have for me, please drop them in the comments. If this was helpful, please like this video, please share it with others that would benefit from it. But I think at this point we will leave it there and I hope you guys have an amazing day.